All right, so we've got an exam coming up in about a week, and we want to get you prepared and uh, confident about your problem solving. And so this is your second major acid-base chemistry homework assignment. So let's go ahead and jump in. There are a lot of good template problems here, a lot of good types of problems dealing with both buffers and titrations. And again, they combine everything we've dealt with before. So this is a great review assignment. So make sure you can uh, explain these problems as you solve them and, and really get at the, the techniques here. And so first one, we're dealing with a buffer, right? And so this buffer is composed of ammonia, which is a weak base, right? We're given a KB. That's a good tip that we're dealing with an equilibrium system here, right? So weak bases, weak acids, they're always going to give you a KB or a KA. And in this case, remember, we got to think about what a buffer is. And a buffer is simply uh, typically uh, two varieties, right? One is a, an acid, a weak acid, right, with its conjugate base and solution. And then in this one here, we've got a weak base, which is ammonia, and its conjugate um, acid. In the case here, we have the salt, ammonium chloride. And so let's go ahead and chemically think about what this is, right? This is NH4Cl. Now, this is a soluble salt, right? And when this uh, dissociates in solution, right, if we've got it in water here to form an aqueous solution, you're going to get NH4, right, which you all know is ammonium, right? And that's the conjugate acid. And you're also going to get chloride. Now, here, it's important to note that chloride is just a spectator, as we talked about before. So you don't want to include the spectator ions in your chemistry. So let's go ahead and think about what's going on here. We can do this a couple different ways, but since I'm given the KB, why don't I go ahead and just write this expression, the reaction that uh, deals with this KB. And I'm going to go ahead and write, um, we've got my ammonia, right? Ammonia here, NH3. And again, I would urge you to put the states, right? Because that will really help you navigate what's going on. Here we're going to react it with some water, right? And water being the pure liquid, and this is this is where some of you are a little uh, you need to be a little bit more careful here. This is an equilibrium system, right? You can't draw the one-way arrows anymore. You've got to really think about this being reversible. Now, granted, it's not going to go very far to the right because this value is so small, but still, um, you've got the reversible uh, reaction here. This is going to reach equilibrium. And so here we've got what we've got a base here and water and so here we're going to form the conjugate acid again make sure to write the charges right and then bases of course in this case we're going to get some OH minus in solution there we go we've got our equilibrium reaction once you get that we can think about the ice method right which is really important and think about what do we have here so here's the ammonia right and you all should know this by now uh, and many of you do ammonia of course is NH3 so the initial concentration right from the get-go is 0.3 molar. Water we're not going to really care about, right? Because we're going to say here that number one, the concentration of water doesn't really change much during the course of this reaction. And it's a liquid. It's pure liquid, right? It doesn't uh, get involved with the equilibrium expression. So the ammonium is over here. So we can write this one as 0.150 again molarity and initially we did not have any hydroxide that we dumped in so it's zero you can figure out Q if you want to right and do the Q versus K and that'd be fine but to save you a little bit of time you realize there's no product here so even though this K is really small we still have to shift over to generate at least a little bit of product in terms of the, the hydroxide so that means if we look at the stoichiometry that's going to decrease by X increase by X and increase by X and that's really important and so we just add these things up, right? 0 0.300 minus x, 0 0.150 plus x, and then uh, 0 plus x is, of course, x. And this is where you really want to be careful here. Some of you, uh, you need to, again, really think about the um, expression here. KB is given to you. Uh, I go ahead and just write this down. So here I've got my NH4 plus molar concentration times the hydroxide, right? We get that all over the concentration of ammonia. Now, again, you know, I, I know we're kind of further in the unit, but it's important here to think about these being equilibrium concentrations, right? Denoted by the equilibrium concentration because we're dealing with a K. And K, uh, the expression holds true only if the concentrations you're dealing with are at equilibrium. So that's really important. And now we can go ahead and just plug things in. And so we get, what, 0 0.150 uh, plus x. We get x. And then all over uh, 
0 0.300 uh, minus x. And here's the trick you can remember right for approximations. You can solve that quadratic and that's fine, but given that k is really small, we can say that x here is small compared to the initial value and x here is small compared to that initial value. So we can make the approximation here is 0 0.150 times x because of course x is significant compared to itself so you can't make any weird approximations there. Um, but there you go. And if we do that we can set that equal to the kb which is 1.8 times 10 to the negative five, fifth and now we can just crank that out. I think, remember, whenever you solve for x, I always implore you to figure out what are you actually solving for. Since you're given a Kb, your reaction better be dealing with hydroxide, and the hydroxide concentration that I get is something around 3.6 times 10 uh, to the negative fifth, right? And again, put your unit on there. That's a molarity. So that's pretty simple. We can now say then that if we know the hydroxide concentration, that allows us to find the pOH, which I think is something along the lines of 4.44. And pH, as we all know, as we discussed from class, is 14 minus pOH, which gives you something on the order of 9.56. And this is important, right? You look at this buffer up here. If this were one to one, uh, again, you can do the shortcut of, of you know, in this case, pOH would equal the, the pKb, because uh, remember we talked about the idea of uh, for a one-to-one -one buffer, pH equals pKa. In this case, you were given the Kb, you could easily find um, the Ka if you remember that, you know, just on the side here, remember Kw equals Ka times Kb. That's a really useful thing. In fact, that's where we get this idea of 14 minus pOH giving you pH, and we talked about that. And so you could find the Ka, and, and if you had a one-to-one, -one, which you don't have in this case, you could at least figure out what would a one-to-one -one be and realize that um, this value shouldn't be all that much different. So we can talk about that example in class if you're having trouble, but that's a pretty straightforward buffer problem. All right, this next one here I thought was a really fun one uh, related a little bit to you know some of the stuff we're we're doing when we're thinking about titrations and so that's let's just dive right into this one this is a really good example of a stoichiometry plus ice problem and so here we've got uh, 200 mils of sodium hydroxide and again whenever I look at sodium hydroxide I just kinda cross out the sodium um, because uh, it's gonna be a spectator and you're gonna add it to a buffer okay so now we've got this buffer here and this buffer is uh, acetate, right? Again, I'm going to get rid of the sodium because I only want the the, the players here that are going to do something. I want the net ionic reaction, and, and you got some acetic acid. I, I typically go ahead and for any weak acid, I'll just say that's HA. Acetate will be my A minus, and that saves me a little bit of trouble. And so, whenever you've got a buffer, and the buffer here has both weak acid and um, conjugate base, we're going to add some strong acid, right? And or sorry, strong base, excuse me, made a mistake there. The hydroxide's a strong base. And when you add that in, you're going to have some reaction chemistry. So what happens when we add that strong base? Well, strong base, right? Uh, if you think about this is denoted as just hydroxide and that's aqueous, right? And that's going to react with what? Well, strong bases and weak bases don't really react, but you know what does react is a strong base and a weak acid. So we're going to get a neutralization reaction and that's really important and what we're going to do here is we're going to say we've got a strong base in a weak acid in solution that K value is going to be very large so we're going to go ahead and approximate that as a one-way reaction and that's going to perturb that buffer system that we set up so we need to figure out what happens here we're going to consume some of that weak acid by a reaction with the strong base and what do we generate well very simply we're going to generate the conjugate base here right so this guy is being consumed to form this and like any good neutralization you're going to form a little bit of water and that's the pure liquid right and in this case we're actually doing uh, I call it stoic uh, but really it's a limiting reagent problem so here we've got uh, the number of moles initially we're going to want to know the change in number of moles and then finally how many moles are left over and we can get this from the problem we've got 200 milliliters of 0.02 hydroxide Again, there's no sodium anywhere in this reaction because this is a net ionic reaction. And that's worth writing, right? We're the chemists that say ni, right? And
there we go. And for this one we say, okay, well hydroxide, that should give us roughly four millimoles, right? Because we took the molarity, 0.02 times the milliliters, and that gives me millimoles. If you want to work in moles, that's perfectly fine. But I like to use millimoles because it gives me small, relatively decent whole numbers, right? So we've got the weak acid here, and we've got 500 mils of that, and we're interested in the concentration of the weak acid. So I think if I multiply 500 times 0 0.08, I get something around 40 millimoles, right? And you can check my math in case I'm making a mistake. Now here you might be tempted to say it's zero, but it's clearly not because we've got 500 mils of a buffer that has both A minus and HA. So that's actually something we can't ignore. We can't just say it's zero. You gotta think about the problem, what's going on. So 500 mils times 0 0.04, and that'll give me the starting millimoles of the conjugate base, and I think that's 20. And again, the water, just like we're not gonna really track that, right? No, no big deal there not going to have any appreciable change. Sure, we'll make a, a little bit, but it's, it's not worth keeping track of. And now we can say, well, which one of these is going to run out first? Well, clearly, reaction is going to decrease on this side, right? Because this is neutralization, right? We're saying that this is roughly a one-way reaction. We're going to decrease by four millimoles, and then we're going to produce that much because this is one to one to one stoichiometry. The strong base runs out you're now at 36 millimoles, right? And then here, you went up by four, so this gives you 24 millimoles. There we go. So you notice that strong base is gone, it's reacted away. So now what we get to do is figure out what is the new equilibrium system. And the new equilibrium system is based upon what's left. And so we've got some weak acid, it's conjugate base, and that's the equilibrium we wanna look at. Now what we need to do is convert these moles back to molarity. And if you have millimoles, the convenient thing is that you can just take the total volume, which in this case, right, uh, volume total is gonna be equal to the buffer, which was 500 mils to start with, plus the amount of base that we added, which was 200, right? Make sure to put the units, and I think it's something like 700 if I can do math on a Friday. Um, there we go, and so now we just crank this out, and we say, okay, well, we've got 700 mils total. It's really important to check that total volume, right? You're adding things together and that's going to change your concentration. So this will give us the concentration of the uh, weak acid and this will give us the concentration of the conjugate base which sets up our next equilibrium system which of course relates to ice. Now let's think of the reaction here. I've, given, I'm, I've been given the Ka of acetic acid so I might as well write the Ka reaction. I'm going to write HA, right? And that's aqueous. I'm gonna add water, right? Or it's gonna react with water because there's a whole bunch there. Now, a weak acid reacting with water is definitely equilibrium, right? So make sure you're drawing the double arrow here. That's really important. In this case, you're gonna generate the conjugate base again. And of course, if this is Ka, we better have some hydronium, right? And that's aqueous. There we go. Remember, ice deals with molar concentration. So this is the weak acid so that comes down here and if I can do uh, my arithmetic correctly I think I get 0.051 molar water again we're not going to track that for the reasons we talked about before and then our conjugate base here uh, you can already tell that's going to be a lower concentration right so we get 0.034 molar and we did not have any starting concentration of acid so that's zero uh, once again you've got to shift a little bit to the right you're gonna form at least a little bit of that hydronium. So this guy goes down by X. This is gonna go up by X, as this one does as well. And then we just total those up, just like we did up above. I hope you're finally convinced that the ICE method will help you solve any equilibrium type problem once you figure out what the chemical system is, and there you go. And so now, you know, like any problem like this, let's go ahead and write the Ka expression, concentration of the conjugate base times hydroxide, right? Really good there. Here we're gonna have um, our initial constant, or sorry, our equilibrium concentration. I'm gonna write that down, really important. Sometimes I forget to do that now that we've gotten further along in the course, but I think that's worth doing, equilibrium concentration, right? And let's just plug that in. We can read from the ice table, right? We've got um, 0 0.034 my, uh, plus x, careful there, almost made a mistake, 
x over 0 0.051 minus x. And again, the k value is really small. So let's go ahead and make an assumption here that x is small compared to the initial concentrations in both cases of the conjugate base and the weak acid. And we can write this as 0 0.034 uh, x, 0 0.051, there you go. And this equals, just carry that value down. It's given to you 1.8 times 10 to negative fifth. Great, we solve for x. x is, remember, has some actual relevance to real life, in this case x is the concentration of hydronium, which is what we're really focused on here when we're trying to find pH. And I think if I do this correctly, I get 2.7 times 10 to the negative fifth molarity. We can then go to pH directly, and I get 4.57. And here's an important thing, right? We've got two sig figs in this value. Just do the rules of logarithms. You're going to have two sig figs and the mantissa, and there you go. There we go. Looks good. And again, you know, this was a, a basic buffer. If we would have had a one-to-one, -one, then pH equals pKa, which isn't too far away from this, and you can uh, use that to figure things out. Now, you know, again, when you make this approximation, I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time here. You should be able to go back and check that 10 to negative fifth is easily with, you know, below 5% of these initial values. And so, yeah, that approximation is, is good to go. So there you go, that's a fun little problem. Really good example of using uh, you know, this idea of stoichiometry followed by ice. Really, really important type of problem there. You see a lot of titrations. They're very, very valuable types of problems to be able to solve. All right, this next one here. Uh, you've got a sample of an unknown acid. It's monoproduct, which is important. I'm just gonna, of course, I love to call these HA and it's dissolved in 50 mils of water and titrated to, remember what the equivalence point, that's important, that means moles acid equals moles base, it also means that millimoles acid equals millimoles of base, whichever one you prefer. And then here you've got some volume of uh, titrant that you used, and again I go ahead and just cross out the sodium and say I'm dealing with a strong base that's effectively hydroxide and now I want to calculate the molar mass. Well this is really neat because it shows you that titration can be used to determine many things, one of which the most important is the molar mass of an unknown acid. And so if we look at this, right, the key here is we're looking for molar mass and you have to remember molar mass is what? That's grams per mole. And if you think about it, we were given the mass, which that's half the problem, right? 7, 8, 6, 5 grams. Now we need to know how many moles we have of HA. Well, that's pretty easy. Based on this idea of the equivalence point, if we can find the moles of base, well, that's really simple. Moles is simply equal to 0 0.1000. Remember, what does that big M stand for, right? big M is molarity, which is moles of solute over liters of solution. Well, we can write that down. That's easy enough. In this case, I'm going to go ahead and write moles of base, just to make sure we know what we're talking about. And then in this one, we can go ahead and crank that out in terms of uh, your, your volume. I, I'll go ahead and just change things up here, and I'm going to go to, to liters here. And I think if you calculate that in your head, it's pretty simple. You know, you go to to liters by dividing by a thousand, right? You can do the dimensional analysis, you know, that you learned before. 0 0.03851 liters, and if I crank that out, I get 0 0.00385 moles base. Now, since this is a monoprotic acid, right, we can write the neutralization reaction. So we can say, you know, if you really wanted to, to think about that, you could say we've got some HA plus OH minus, right? That's aqueous, that's aqueous. Titrations deal with this first. This is just like we did up above, right? And so we get H, we get A minus, right? That's aqueous plus a little bit of water. So the main thing I did this for is just to show you it's a one to one to one, right? Monoproduct tells you the same thing, so that's maybe an extra step. At the equivalence point, right, that simply means that if you have 0 0.00385 moles of base, 
you also have that same value for moles of acid, which guess what? Um, that goes up here, which then means that the molar mass, right, equals 0 0.7865 grams over 0 0.00385 moles, which if you crank this out, I think I get something around the order of 204.2 grams per mole. Some of you might realize that's a very familiar number from lab. You know, odds are it's it's very close to the value for KHP, which we've been using. So that's a really neat little problem. I hope it's something that, that will um, stick with you in the future because that's a great application of titrations. Speaking of titrations, right, this is a big deal here. And so this one caused some of you some issues. So I'd like to spend a little bit of time going over at least the first uh, setup for this one. Uh, and so it might help you get through um, some of these very similar problems by seeing one worked out pretty well. Uh, oh, what the hell, it's, it's Friday, I'll go ahead and work the whole thing. But it's very similar for A and B. So let's go ahead and just jump in. So first thing we gotta do, right? We've got a sample of benzoic acid. Well, you're given a K, right? So that should tell you that we've got a weak acid. I'm just gonna call it HA, right? That's my favorite way to um, approximate those. And then you're gonna titrate it with sodium hydroxide. Again, I'm gonna get rid of that counter ion, not even gonna worry about it, and say, well, let's think of the chemistry that's going on. Okay, we've got a sample of weak acid, right? And we're gonna add in some strong base. This is just like the previous um, page where we did number two, right? But let's go ahead and set up the chemistry because I think some of you are having a hard time setting up the chemistry. So we're gonna think about the stoichiometry first, and this is gonna be a limiting reagent problem, right? Limiting reagent, really important. So we've got some HA, that's a nice weak acid, and we're gonna throw in some strong base, right? And that's really important to write that in. I always put my, my charges there to make sure. Now again, this is a strong base and a weak acid. We're gonna say that effectively has a really large K value, so we're just gonna write it as a one-way arrow. And what are you gonna get? Well, you're gonna get that conjugate base, and you're also gonna generate some water just like the problem up above, right? The buffer problem is a really good warm up for this one. And we say, okay, well in this case, well, we're gonna have some moles initial, we're gonna have some change in number of moles, and then we're gonna have moles final. And so this is really pretty straightforward. So what do we do here with HA? Well, we've got 10 mils of 0.1, that's easy enough, right? We can say that we have essentially, what, one millimole. And then for hydroxide, well, how do we know? Well, in this case, it told us we've got five mils of this 0.1. And if you think about that, that's 0 0.5 millimoles, right? And initially, we did not add any A minus. And so this is important because this is a big difference from the number two up above because we had a buffer and we initially had some non-zero. But in this case, we did not have any starting concentration of the conjugate base. So that's zero and water we don't worry about. Which one of these is gonna run out? Well, it looks like this one's less, so that'll be our limiting reagent. So 0 0.5, this is gonna reduce by 0 0.5 as it runs out. And then, of course, since we have one to one to one stoichiometry, this is gonna increase by 0 0.5. So now we've got 0 0.5 millimoles left. This one is completely consumed, and now we have 0.5 left as well. And that's important, pretty simple. Now, remember, we wanna track total volume here because now we need to convert these back to concentrations, more specifically the molar concentrations. So what did I start with? I had 10 mils of the acid solution and I added 5 mils of the titrant so that means my total volume is 15 mils. So when we go to look at the ones that are left over in solution we can calculate what we have in terms of molar concentrations. And that will allow us to set up an equilibrium. Because if you notice now, and I know a number of you are screaming at the screen right now and saying, come on, Porter, just, just solve pH equals pKa and be done with it. And that's brilliant. I'm glad you're, you're ahead of the game. But for those that don't have it yet, that will just kind of work it out and think about what's going on. So now we've got a weak acid, it's conjugate base, that screams buffer. And we've got a one-to-one -one buffer, right? Because we know these concentrations are gonna be identical. And so let's think about the chemistry. I'm given a Ka, so I'm gonna go ahead and just write that expression, that reaction is really important. We've got that, 
weak acid reacting with water, right? And that's a liquid. And we're going to say that now this is an equilibrium, right? That's really important. You're going to have A minus, right? That's our conjugate base. Plus what? Well, it's HA, so we better get some hydronium. Really important there. So initial concentration, the change in concentration, the equilibrium. Well, if you think about this, I think we get something on the order of 0 0.033 molar water. We don't worry about it. And then for the, right, because we just brought that down for the conjugate base, we're just going to bring that down, 0 0.033. And hydronium, we did not add any, right? And now we know that we've got to shift to the right to at least make a little bit of hydronium to establish equilibrium. And so since the stoichiometry is 1 to 1 to 1, we're going to add some there and then add some there. Boom. Consuming some of that HA as we shift to the right to produce some of the conjugate base and some of the hydronium. And then we just write this out. Now, I know some of you have already jumped to the end, and that's great that you understand it. But I'm going to go ahead and work it out for everybody who wants to get a little bit more practice. There we go. Again, I love to write out the Ka just so I know what's actually going on here. We're going to have A minus, we're at the conjugate base. We're going to have some hydronium as our product, right? Those molar concentrations. And again, I'm going to be good and write these are the equilibrium concentrations. This is our weak acid, right? And we're looking for the equilibrium concentration to agree with K there. And now we can just plug these in from our amazing ice table which will never steer you wrong as long as you make it correctly. And then this one here is 0 0.033, right, minus x. And many of you are going to say, it's a small number, it's a small number, and it is. You're exactly right. So let's go ahead and make that fun approximation to save us from the um, quadratic equation. So we get that over 0 0.033. And now there you go, you're right that value cancels out so that effectively now we can say that x equals ka right and if you want to you can go ahead and calculate that or just write it down effectively right 6.3 times 10 to the negative 5 molar so then we can say that ph in this case equals what negative log of the hydronium concentration right which also in this case equals your pka and I get, I believe, something along the lines of 4.20. And those that were yelling this all along, good for you. A one-to-one -one buffer, the pH equals the pKa, and that's brilliant. But I think it's really important because the ice method is really important, in this case, coupled with stoichiometry, and you can't go wrong with this kind of setup. So I hope that was helpful for some of you. All right, next one is a little bit trickier. Um, now that you're at the equivalence point, and you want to say, okay, what's going on? How do I know what the volume is? Well, that's pretty simple. We can just go ahead and think about the stoichiometry we established up above. And bear with me while I write it down. I know you guys have probably got this all written down already, but we've got the weak acid, right? And we're going to add the hydroxide, which is the strong base, right? And we've got that down. And we're going to, again, assume that it's a effectively going to go towards completion because the K is so high and it's going to give us the conjugate base and a little bit of water. There we go. Same reaction. And let's think about our moles initial, our moles change, and our moles final, right? And so for HA, we're, we're kind of starting from scratch again. We're going to say that we've got what? We've got uh, 1.0 millimoles, I believe. And we're not going to just get water out of there already. At the equivalence point, what do you notice? Well, at the equivalence point, moles acid better equal moles base. And we started with none of the conjugate acid, so we're good there. Now, this is easy. Minus 1, minus 1, plus 1, because you have 1 to 1 stoichiometry here. These are being consumed. In this case, neither or both. I mean, it doesn't matter. They're both the same amount. That's the definition of equivalence point. So they're both, both going to be consumed completely. And then we're going to generate one millimole of the conjugate base here. Now, to find that concentration, we need to figure out the total volume, right? So that's total volume, right? And here we say, okay, well, we start out with what? We start out with uh, 10 mils of the acid sample. 
and they both happen to be the same concentration so uh, that means we must have had 10 milliliters of base to get the same amount and that gives us a total of 20 milliliters so when we deal with this it's simply 1 millimole divided by 20 milliliters and that tells us that number one we can calculate to a molar concentration but more importantly look at this we've got no weak acid left we've got no strong base left the only thing that's left in solution to do any kind of chemistry is this weak base this conjugate base so that's what's going to drive our equilibrium because it's the only one left so it's a little bit different than the one up above so at the equivalence point this is really just a weak base problem nothing more so we got a weak base reacting with water right and this is of course a weak value a weak weak base so it's going to give us an equilibrium and that's going to form some of the conjugate acid right and bases do what they're going to form some hydroxide there we go all right, so let's let's think about what we have here. We've got our ice set up. So we've got this conjugate base. We can bring this in from our stoichiometry set up above. And if I can do this math, I think I get something along the lines of 0 0.05 molar, right? The water we don't care about. Initially, there's no um, HA left, right? So that's a zero. And there's zero hydroxide left so that's zero so that means this guy's got to shift a little bit to the the right so we're going to decrease the reactants and increase the products right by one to one to one so we can write this out this is again a really good review problem if you want to think about prepping for the exam because this is just a weak base problem nothing nothing too surprising here now if this is forming hydroxide it's really important to remember what we're dealing with and this is a KB because we wrote a reaction that is described by the KB. And that one is going to equal the conjugate acid times the hydroxide concentration all over that initial weak base. And again, these are going to be at equilibrium. I try to encourage you to remember it's equilibrium. Only at equilibrium do we calculate a K. Anytime else, it's a, it's a, K, it's a Q. So we can plug these in and we get what? X um, times X all over 0 0.05 minus x, right? That's pretty simple. And again, this is a small value, so we can actually go ahead and try our approximation. We can say x squared over 0 0.05, and that equals what? Well, we were given the Ka, and we weren't given the Kb, but we can know that Kb and Ka um, are related by the Kw, so if we want that, we can calculate Kw over Ka gives you the Kb, and numerically, I think I get something like 1.6 times uh, 10 to the negative 10. That's a that's a small number, so I'm I'm thinking that x is going to be pretty small compared to that. So we'll be okay with our assumption. And if you solve that right, what do you get? You get x equals um, our concentration, and this is important, right? Because what is x? In this case, x is hydroxide right and that's really important that's hydroxide concentration got to know what's going on there and if I calculate this right on a Friday night I get uh, 2.8 times 10 to the negative 6 molar that means POH right POH is going to give me something on the order of 5.55 but I want pH so pH is 14 minus POH and I think I get something on the order of 8.45. And this is really important. So at the equivalence point of a weak acid titrated by a strong base, the pH is really dominated by the conjugate base, right? The weak acid is converted all out to the conjugate base, right? If you go back and look at the titration, if both of these are the same amount, all of the strong base is reacted away all of the weak acids reacted away and it's converted entirely to its conjugate base which means the only one left standing so to speak is the conjugate base so the conjugate base the weak base chemistry here dominates at the equivalence point which should tell you you're dealing with a base if you're dealing with a base pH better be above 7 right that's really important and we can check our answer here and that makes sense very good the next one I think is almost laughably simple. Um, it's the easiest of the whole thing. 
let's just say that we overshot, right? We went beyond, so this is important, right? This is beyond the equivalence point. So that means, well actually before I tell you, let's just go ahead and jump in and think about it. Once again, we're gonna have our, um, our weak acid, right? So let's, let's pretend that we didn't really think about it and we're just gonna be zombies and do the same approach over and over again. Think about that limiting reagent and then I'll, I'll have a little bit of discussion once we look at this. So we've got our HA, our weak, our weak acid, it's gonna react with strong base, right? Strong base there. And again, just like we did up above, we're gonna say that's effectively a very large K and we're gonna go one way there. We're gonna get the conjugate base, right? Nothing really new there, and we're gonna generate some water. Okay, well, we're gonna look at the moles initial, the moles change, and then the moles final. Well, we know that the acid, just like the first two examples, we start out with 1.0 millimoles of that. And this time, you know, we don't have uh, one. We look at this and we say we know the concentration was point what? Excuse me, I had to sneeze there. Uh, 0.1 molar sodium hydroxide times 11.5. Uh, that gives me what? 1.15 millimoles. Okay, we had zero uh, conjugate base to begin with in the water. We don't really worry about it. So you notice here, what's the limiting reagent? Well, the limiting reagent's actually the acid, the weak acid, right? So that's gonna run out first. So if we do that, and again, remember you consume all of the HA to the A minus. We're gonna have zero of the weak acid left. We're gonna have a little bit of um, strong base left over. And then we're gonna have one millimole of this uh, weak base, right? Okay, now some of you just jumped just robotically like you did the last two uh, sub-segments here that I'm gonna set up ice. Well, you could do that and you could probably waste a lot of time because what's gonna be the one that dominates here? I've got a strong base and I've got a weak base. Hmm, even on a Friday that's not a terrible, uh, terribly challenging question. Well, obviously it's going to be the strong base. Strong bases are going to dominate compared to a weak base. Well, that's easy. As long as I know the total volume. Well, let's see. I started out with what? I started out with 10.0 milliliters of the acid and I dumped in 11.5 milliliters of base. That's going to give me what? I'm going to get 21.5 milliliters. Okay, well, that's I can do that. 21.5 milliliters. I know how many millimoles of strong base. What is that going to give us? That's going to give us the concentration of hydroxide that is in excess. And that is what's going to dictate the pH here. And if we calculate that out, I think I get 0 0.0070 molar, which means then I can find pOH, right? And if I do that, I get pOH of 2.16. Again, I want the pH. That's simply 14 minus the pOH, and that gets me something along the lines of 11.84. And you see here that once you pass the equivalence point, this thing is just going to skyrocket, right? So if you think about what a titration curve looks like in this case, you're going to have, you know, your pH over here and the volume of base added. Right, you start out low here, you know, somewhere where the, the weak acid dominates because you haven't added anything, and then you're gonna start to add, right? You're gonna add base, and that's gonna convert some of the HA to the conjugate base, and you kind of form this buffer region where you don't have much change. And then once you hit the equivalence point, it jumps up, right? And then finally it's gonna level off a little bit because at this point the excess strong base a la hydroxide is going to dictate right in this range up here and so that's what we see once you form your stoichiometry chart or calculation here and you realize that the hydroxide is actually then in excess that's going to dominate any pH discussion 
And so if there's any strong base left over, boom, just cut to the chase and you're done. If you want to, you're welcome to go ahead and throw it into an equilibrium and prove to yourself that it's it's pretty close to that. But I know a lot of you are looking for ways to be more effective and more efficient with time on an exam, and I think that's probably the way to do it. So hopefully, you know, there are a few things here that you picked up uh, can, you know, dust off your problem solving skills and, and feel more confident. Again, QSC will be open on Sunday for your help. Uh, you know, it'll be open next week too, and, and I'll be available to chat. We'll do some practice on on Wednesday before the exam, but the exam's coming on Friday, and I hope you'll be ready to show that you can master this material, solve these problems effectively, uh, take pride in your work, and, and really knock this exam out of the park and score really well and feel good going into your spring break. Okay, well, I've talked enough, and um, you guys have a good weekend, and I'll, I'll see you next week.